Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Chief Investment Officer with Revere Asset Management. Today is Monday, April 15th, 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Roundup Daily Market Insight video. State of the market, we've devolved into a short-term and medium-term pullback today. You can check the trend gauge in the upper right of the screen. Leaders downgraded today from neutral to bearish. Short-term trend downgraded from neutral to bearish with multiple closes for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 below the 21-day moving average and the slope of the line rolled over, joining the other three indexes that have been below there uh, for a while. Medium term, uh, still on yellow because the slope of the line of the S&P and the NASDAQ is still higher, but they broke below and closed below their 50-day moving average today, joining the Dow small caps and mid caps with multiple closes below the 50-day. Long term and the market never gets into serious trouble unless we break below this long-term 200-day moving average on the S&P 500. Long-term, all five of the major indexes still above there. That's why we track things across three time frames. Some people are just long-term uh, investors. And you, like I said, you can't get into serious trouble. You're going to see more pullbacks uh, and drawdowns in your account. But if you're a long-term investor, if you just obey the 200-day moving average, you can uh, stay away from any severe bear market. So what happened today after uh, the anemic attack by Iran on Israel over the weekend brought some, uh, oh, some joy into the market uh, overnight and into the open? We had a nice gap up. Uh, seven uh point seven five percent on the S and P and the Nasdaq, a percent on the Dow. That lasted about thirty minutes. We went sideways, and then completely rolled over. So we'll call it a gap and crap. That's a technical term. S and P five hundred and the Nasdaq one hundred breaking their fifty day and just bad numbers across the board here. Big seven down two point one percent. R G eight down one point nine percent. S&P 500 down 1.2, equal weight S&P, a little bit better, down 0.86%. NASDAQ 100 down 1.65, equal weight down 1.4, Dow down 0.65, mid caps down 1.1, Russell 2000 small caps down 1.4, Global 6040 down 0.81, in-house protection down 0.74% as uh, some more of our stops were triggered. We'll hit that when we go over the tail of the tape. Right now, let's get into our index and inter asset correlation charts. We'll start here with the S&P 500. And you can see very clearly uh, another a big candle uh, from top to bottom, expanding range. That's bearish, and especially when it closes near the bottom. But the gap up today failed right into the declining 21-day moving average. It's not something you want to see. Uh, with the slope of the line rolled over, there's a chance of that. And that's exactly what happened today. And then as the day went along, breaking below the 50-day moving average, you can see on a five-minute chart here, the very brief uh, sideways move of 30 minutes before uh, multiple harsh moves down, trending lower, anemic bounce into the close, uh, but breaking intermediate term support badly. And now into this gap up area where we had in mid-February that kicked off the latest leg up, which we've now given most of that back over the past three weeks. Let's go to the NASDAQ 100. You can also see here a break of the 50-day moving average as well, meaning last Thursday's candle was just an aberration uh, as we broke below there and broke further below. Uh, visit And now below the lows of early March as well. Uh, really nowhere to hide today. 11 out of 11 spider sectors down. Uh, the Dow breaking to, breaking the 38,000 level uh, and making new recent lows despite showing relative strength. Goldman Sachs, uh, a nice reaction to earnings today, but uh, that, that uh, shielded it a bit from uh, a worse overall number. Uh, mid caps, not good. Second close below the 50-day moving average. 21-day moving average has rolled over. 
small caps, 21 day rolled over, looking to break the 50 day moving average over the next uh, couple of days. I'm talking about uh, a moving average cross to the downside. And you can see much lower lows breaking below that 200 level, which acted as support uh, four weeks ago. Relative strength making new lows ahead of price, uh, as you can see here, is never good either. Let's go to the VIX. VIX up wrongly. Fear continuing to be in the market with the Mideast tensions, spike in yields, uh, and the pullback in the market making uh, higher highs going all the way back to October of last year when the indexes bottomed, late October of last year uh, when the indexes bottomed. Long-term average of the VIX is basically right here. It's about 19 and a half. Um, of course, there, you see massive spikes above there sometimes. And uh, in the good times, it trends below 15, which is when the market normally is uptrending below that 16, 15, 15 or 16 level. Uh, but we're far from that now with an 11% uh, percent jump up today. U.S. dollar uh, making higher highs, very clean breakout now. Uh, still now it's into the resistance from back October when the market uh, put in a uh, recent put in the lows and started the correction at the beginning of no or start, started the rally at the beginning of November. Uh, and something also changing uh, gold and gold and silver still holding up fine, but golden uh, but gold and silver stocks, not so much. Here's GDX. Uh, down 0.7% today after a big negative reversal. That didn't stop gold uh, from bouncing at the 10-day moving or the 8-day uh, exponential moving average up 2% today and silver up over 3%. They So they had negative reversals also on Friday, but the metals themselves are bouncing. Let's look at copper uh, to uh, the copper index, CPER. So you know, if you drop it on your foot and it hurts, uh, it's working. CPER, the copper index, uh, up 2.4%. COPX, this is copper stocks. This uh, stayed positive as well, along with F uh, FCX. Uh, the thought here is that copper, there's just not enough copper in the world, especially with what's going to be needed to build out all the AI infrastructure. Uh, but so for now, copper's holding up and the metals are holding up and oil, oil itself is holding up. Here's oil K, uh, a crude ETF, uh, positive, but oil stocks across the board will bring up uh, VDE, which is uh, the ETF that we own, uh, pulling back to the 21 day moving average. NRGU, which is our favorite when energy stocks are working, also pulling back, breaking the eight day exponential moving average, but still above the 21. Okay, uh, Bitcoin, uh, not a safe haven by any stretch of the imagination. Two ugly down days by IBIT now, bringing it down to the 50-day moving average. Now on to bonds. Uh, before the open, uh, retail sales were strong. The market was still euphoric with its gap up, but yields started spiking pre-market. And that carried over uh, to the regular session, yield spiking, meaning prices are down. So BND, the broad bond index, making a lower low, down 0.66%. The long bond, TLT, price making a lower low as well. You know, if the price is making a lower low, you're going to see a higher high on the uh, yield. And that's what we're seeing here on the long bond and on uh, the 10-year. So none of those things are good for individual names. All right, let's get to the tail of the tape. You can pause this. I'll hit the highlights. I mentioned retail sales. We're now on the bear case with the sustained break below the 21-day moving average. Expectations now negative with the slopes of the lines rolling over on the 21. Uh, as far as sectors go, I mentioned gold, silver. Also, DBA, which is uh, agriculture commodities, had a good day as well. To the downside, all 11 spider sectors led also to the downside by biotech, software, uh, XLK, that's tech, XLY, consumer discretionary, as Tesla announced massive layoffs and broke uh, lower by 5.6%. And real estate, you're not going to see real estate doing well if yields continue to rise. So in the portfolio, more stops hit. We st stopped out on Crowd, IBIT, and Uber. 
Uh, over 70% on crowd. We bought that on the follow through day on 11 one. So sorry to see that goodbye to the portfolio, but it's living below the 50 day moving average. Uber booked about a 20% gain there. The NVIDIA that we added last week, we trimmed half of it with a, with a tiny loss and we hedged our SPXL long uh, with SPXS. That'll work itself out over the next couple of days. Taxable accounts will keep the hedge. Non-taxable accounts uh, will just cut SPXS and SPXL as there's uh, no reason to hold on to it any longer uh, since you don't have to pay taxes in retirement accounts. So bottom line on the day, gap up fails badly, reverses lower to a trend down day. S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 break the 50-day bulls firmly in charge, sorry, bears firmly in charge uh, after today. And uh, we reduced our exposure from 0.74 to 0.47. Still have a few um, positions left, but 0.5 with us living below the 50-day moving average, our ceiling on exposure uh, is a 0.5, which is half, basically half of the S&P 500 risk. And if we continue lower, this will uh, tick lower. Um, just not much looking good here, but we know the market can turn on a dime. We've got earnings season uh, kicking off, but a lot of fear in the market uh, now as if it's uh, bracing for something that hasn't happened yet. That shows up on the charts and in prices, and we're paying attention to it. So let's uh, go through the portfolio changes today, CRWD. Uh, you can see that clear break of the recent uh, support level over the last week and a half and clearly below the 50-day moving average in the 10 weeks. I stopped on that. IBIT already showed this chart, clear break of the 21 and then making a lower low. Uh, paper cut, uh, stop on that. Uber, uh, stopped out on that. You can see it ran into the 50-day and the declining 21-day. That was the high of the day, kind of similar to the indexes, and that was it. Rolled over, made a lower low. Uh, relative to the bottom of the base that's forming right now. So we wrap that gain up. Uh, NVIDIA for uh, taxable accounts today was long-term capital gains day for the buy we made on NVIDIA uh, a year ago, uh, up over 200% on that buy. Uh, but that's not shielding NVIDIA right now from the 21 day moving average and the recent buys, all new buys come in, they, they get treated on their own merit. So if they're not working, uh, the stops in place for new buys, we have a last in first out or highest cost approach to these. So uh, the uh, buys from over uh, a year ago, back here in May in the 280 ish area, uh, sitting on some nice gains. And now if for some reason we have to blow that out, at least it will be, uh, on the the much lower long-term capital gain uh, tax rate. So that's NVIDIA, and I mentioned the hedge. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some things that did hold up today, and there weren't many of them, but CPNG, uh, this is a Korean online retailer, uh, gapped up again but reversed, still stayed positive, up 1.9%. Something like this just goes on the watch list. Uh, for when the market writes itself as it's one of the few breakouts that are that is holding up. Uh, for the most part, any other breakout is just reversing as a failure, and that's just what's going on with the overall market. Dell uh, sitting on the de now declining 21-day moving average, but still held on to uh, tiny gains on the day. Uh, FCX, which we sold on Friday with the big negative reversal, sitting right on that 50 level in the eight-day moving average, very clearly a leader. And uh, we'll see how the copper complex shakes out. As uh, you know from when Michael was with us, he did a lot of research on how much copper is needed in the world, and there's just not enough of it. So stocks like FCX and SCCO, which was down a percent today, but uh, these are still uh, some of the best-looking charts out there. Uh, that's all that was green on my screen, unless you were uh, a commodity. Here's an, here's a, a base metal commodity, PDBC, uh, also positive on the day. Copper's a part of this and DBA agricultural, uh, ETF, uh, commodities up a percent on the day. As I said, oil itself up, but, uh, oil stocks, not, and, um, 
this is uh, this is how we differentiate ourselves from uh, <laughs> from pie chart advisors. I had a spirited. We won't call it a debate. We'll say uh, we traded insults on Twitter over the weekend uh, with a guy who posted. Um, he's a pie chart guy, and he posted a chart saying that sequence of returns wasn't important. But what he showed in there is a hypothetical portfolio that drew down from 1.65 million to 650,000. And this guy was okay with that because the market came back down the road. Uh, if you're in retirement and you've watched your portfolio go from 1.65 million to 655,000, do you think a pep talk is going to keep you in the market? No, you're going to have PTSD because your nest egg was just devastated. And anyway, the guy thinks I sell snake oil because we have downside protection uh, and is in love with uh, his approach and frankly, okay with a massive loss. And we're just not at Revere. Uh, we've been showing this chart lately, how we're different from uh, traditional advisors, these uh, seven bullet points and our overall approach. And as William O'Neill said, anybody can get you in who's going to get you out. Well, we're going to get you out at Revere. We talk about it every night in the videos. We talk about how we ride trends higher and we talk about how we get the heck out of the way when they weaken and roll over. And that's exactly what you're seeing on the indexes now. So this is where the protection part of our protection strategy starts to kick in as uh you know the market takes us out we're just following what the market's doing not our opinion not uh the fact that we like a story on something and we better hold on to it but when the moving averages start to roll over and you start to break them that's the market telling you something that coupled with the strength in commodities uh and rising yields uh leads us to just getting more defensive uh you know, we uh, dodged the 2022 uh, bear market, losing significantly less than the market. At one point, we were down 8% while the market was down 28%. And um, that we're just following our rules to do it. And we proudly talk about it in videos every night. And if you're interested in this approach, reach out. My email is Donna Rivera Asset.com. My partner's Dan Stewart, Dan at Rivera Asset.com. The phone is 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 5932. And with that, I'll wrap up the video for tax day. Historically, this is the low of April is put in. Uh, and the back half of April is traditionally bullish from a seasonality standpoint. We'll see if that plays out, but for now, uh, things have gotten ugly and, um, we respect that. And that's going to wrap it. Thanks for listening and have a great day. Remember, it's not how much you make in the markets. It's how much of that you can keep. Take care, everybody.